Uh, no, my name is not Alex. Uh, that's the name on the schedule. He's coming up in a little bit uh, right after me with Casey. Uh, the title for the session is EWAS and Project Tech and Hands-On. Uh, so we have some tech that we want to discuss, uh, what's going on behind the scenes. And I have a clipboard for ideas from you guys to help us, so I'm going to write them down. Uh, because there are some open problems, and this, this talk has a lot of interactions with Frederick's talk, so I'm very happy that we're back-to-back. -back. Uh, so we have Parody's view and maybe Iwasm's view of certain situ situations. So uh, when you are uh, planning to use a uh, execution engine, you have a lot of different questions that are unique to blockchain. So maybe WebAssembly people are asking questions about size and speed, um, and maybe some sort of interactions between modules, but we have sort of other, cons well, they, maybe they're asking qu questions about bombs as well, but we have some unique things to blockchain uh, that have to be addressed. Uh, it's, is it possible that WebAssembly is not well suited for blockchain? This, is, of course, is a possibility. Anything is possible. Um, so, uh, of course, we need consensus. Every execution has to Everyone has to agree on, on the result. Uh, so how do we constrain WASM to be deterministic? Uh, someone will start talking about floating points, uh, memory grow. Uh, someone's going to talk about host functions, uh, maybe breaking something. Uh, we don't have guarantees, that, uh, the, the spec, uh, uh, the proofs from the, uh, for WebAssembly don't apply to host functions. Uh, in, the, in the appendix, there are sort of limits to the embedding. Uh, you can exceed various limits, so we have to be very careful. Uh, there are no guarantees. What else? Can we have a proof that we have determinism, that we have... We, we need guarantees, as many guarantees as possible. Um, so those are pretty much them. Maybe I, this was sort of uh, a, a short list. Maybe there are other ones I'm missing. But it would be nice if, if we as a community combined and said, well, it would be embarrassing for us all any of us to fail for this reason. All right, let's fail for something else. And let's not fail because of a bug, because if there's a bug, there's news and there's bad news and, uh, and then blockchain loses overall. So maybe we can just you know, say these are the things. Uh, maybe we can work on some sort of mechanizations together to, to make sure that we don't have any of these embarrassing bugs on consensus. So uh, Ethereum's model uh, what if there is a bug? There could still be a bug, maybe not spec level, but implementation level. Uh, so Ethereum is a little bit unique, uh, unlike other ones. Uh, so the security model is to have many implementations, so diversification, uh, independently implemented by different teams, and uh, a block proposer should execute uh, on all of them. And if there's a consensus bug, if something computes differently than others, uh, then drop that block, report there is a bug, or if it's just on one that's not used much, uh, then just maybe include it with the understanding that something bad, you know, the, every, every node that's running uh, only, the one that broke uh, might fork. So there's dangers, uh, but this is the model that Ethereum uses. And uh, Ethereum recognizes that we can do all the formal verification in the world, we can, do all the, we can have all the best, you know, uh, um, uh, smartest people working on it, there could still be a, 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 something can still go wrong, so diversification. Uh, there could be a, a problem with the proving system, uh, human error, whatever. Uh, when a human transfers the, the whatever, the, the proof to the computer or the kernel of the proving system, there could be a bug, whatever. So uh, diversification is, and on hardware as well, diversification of software and hardware. So that is the security model of Ethereum as I understand it. Maybe I'm wrong, please interrupt me to add, add some comments. But this is something sort of unique to maybe Ethereum, maybe other people have it, um, but that's the model. So I had six points, I think. I, the s number six I don't have much on, uh, and that's sort of still open. There are a lot of open things, um, but bombs are really interesting. I want to tell you about bombs. Uh, so I define bombs very loosely. Uh, for, to define a bomb, you have to define some uh, limits. Uh, so a bomb is an input to a WASM engine which exhausts some time or size limits. Uh, what those limits are depend on uh, what your system you're running on. So for Ethereum, we have uh, at most one second for execution time, hopefully 200 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds, and uh, 24 kilobyte around their uh, bytecode sizes. And uh, Guido, our uh, fuzz tester, found this is a snippet. You can't see it. The resolution is bad, but this says loop. It's just nested loops. This is WebAssembly code. Um, 
and Guido fuzz tested and found uh, 2.5 seconds to compile in, uh, in one of the uh, engines, and that would be uh, a bomb by our definition. So we would classify that as a bomb. Yes, sir? Oh, it's just I32const, whatever. It was, okay, so this is generated by fuzzing. It's just uh, some heurist, some whatever. Uh, but perhaps once we see that, I conjecture that this is the reason uh, that this happened. It could be something else. But once we know the reason, we can sort of amplify it and make some pathological example that is only this. Uh, so maybe it'll be much worse than 2.5 seconds and much smaller than uh, 20 kilobytes. But um, so this caused an alarm. And we said there are JIT bombs, and there was a lot of noise about JIT bombs. Uh, are there any other bombs? Yes. Well, by this definition, I don't know, maybe people have defini different definitions of the word bomb. Uh, a tiny, tiny module. Uh, this is the module. It sort of wraps this uh, uh, 1 billion I64s. So there's a shorthand notation in the, in the binary format where I can encode uh, locals with you know, a multi, uh, number of them, and then the 70 is I64, and this is just the, the 1 billion. And oh gosh, so we, we're executing, someone uploads this module, and we, start, we want to execute it uh, at call time. Uh, when we call this function, uh, it wants to create the, the locals, but there are 8 gigabytes worth of them. Uh, and it's expressed like in such tiny, you know, so. So, uh, concisely, yes? Sorry, this is such a basic question. There's some more question going on here. Like, like, like... Yes, there's a shorthand notation. So, in the text format, you have to explicitly say I64, I64, dot, dot. You, you have to keep on repeating it, and it would be so long to do it a billion times. Uh, but in the, in the binary format, there is a, a shorthand notation uh, to just write this many times and then this, this value. So we have to be aware of this. Or it doesn't even have to be a, a, you know, it could be maybe a function that recursively is called and it might be 1,000. So it just keeps on calling itself and then locals, we have a, a, a function uh, frame stack. So these kinds of things are bombs. And we have to be very careful. Um, so uh, there are more, presumably. Um, so when does this, ha when does this get checked? Uh, maybe at validation time, maybe we uh, don't allow uh, uh, recursion at all, and we, ch we validate. There are many things we can do. At first, we might, uh, to be safe, there, whatever. So I guess it's open to find these kinds of things. Metering. Uh, we, there was talk about metering yesterday, talk about metering today. Uh, what, maybe does, does everybody know what metering is? Or the injection, the basic block level stuff, most people do know. Maybe not everybody. Um, so we, uh, instead of doing, there's an optimization. Okay, so maybe I should read it. Metering injection. Each app code has a cost. Inject calls uh, to use gas into the bytecode. At runtime, the cost of a contract execution is the sum of app codes executed. So this is a sum model. We just sum everything up. It's simple. It's, the, the model's nice because it's simple. Um, so we start here. Uh, we transform it to inject these two app codes with their immediates. And when we execute at runtime, this use gas is a conditional uh, uh, brand, or if, if we exceed something, so there's, there's a condition, uh, so there might be some pipeline hazard and things like that. Um, uh, but the, the model is easy. The model is simple. It's just, it's just an additive model. Yes, sir. I don't understand what pipeline hazard means in this context. Uh -huh. So there's a conditional branch in this use gas. If we exceed, I didn't explain, uh, if there is a, if we exceed, we have a, a gas that the contract call can use, and once we exceed it, we have to halt the execution. Uh, this is our mechanism to prevent uh, uh, things that just loop, uh, infinite loops and never-ending uh, uh, execution. Uh, but I'm just saying, as an aside, that this system is not perfect. There might be some uh, added code size. There might be some uh, conditional branch. Uh, uh, inside of this use gas statement to, ch with a, to check if something is less than something else, uh, uh, things like this. But this is a reasonable model because we, if we have a, a long basic block, we just have one of these, so maybe it's amortized over, over a long basic block, but short, short uh, uh, basic blocks, the, this call and this, these things might dominate the runtime. Uh, so there's a lot of things to, involved in this whole metering model. What does the pipeline refer to? 
Oh, so in the hardware pipeline, forgive me, um, in, the, in the CPU, uh, when you have a conditional branch, you, you, uh, you can't, there, there's a pipeline hazard. If you took a course in computer architecture, you know what I'm talking about, and if you didn't, then you're just staring at me. I just don't understand how those levels of abstraction relate to each other. I understand about hardware pipelines, but uh, at, the, at the WASM level of abstraction, the, um, you, the, the, the hardware issues regarding pipelines are completely masked. It shouldn't show up here. There's a cost to it. There, when you call this use gas function, there oh, is a cost. I got it. I got it. We have to meter. You're, you're, the, the fact that you've injected this causes the, the WASM to generate machine code that impedes the pipeline optimizations that WASM... Okay, got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm very bad at explaining things, as you all see. Uh, so that's what I want to talk about, the metering slowdown. So that sort of was going to build up. Um, so we did a bunch of benchmarks on precompiles, and we got it down to oftentimes 1.5x slowdown for metering. Uh, uh, sometimes very good, like uh, approaching, you know, uh, uh, 1.05, approaching no slowdown, uh, sometimes 2.4, but this was after a lot of work. Uh, sometimes we had 500x slowdowns. Uh, uh, for example, in this, in this case, we had like 386 nested blocks, and then, each, and then this was in some sort of uh, inner loop, so this constantly called use gas. It was just dominated, you can see it. And this was like, you know, three... This, I did a dot dot an ellipses, so this is just continuing uh, a lot of it. it uh, uh, so, sir, case, uh, yes, sir. It, it looks like you matter, like, I, I can't see actually, but it looks like you matter blocks, which kind of should be like almost uh, free because. Like, okay, so there's a, th th there is that. Uh, so, what do we meter to begin with? So, there's that question. What are we metering? Should we meter n? Should we meter the control flow construct? Uh, uh, 100% correct, that there are these sort of questions, and in this case, yes, we were metering, uh, uh, we considered this chunk, to be a, this chunk to be a block, so we had to inject metering before it, but a different metering algorithm might ignore it. Is that a good algorithm? I don't know. That's a good, that's an interesting question. So uh, Casey wisely said, well, let's just, I call this, mm -hmm. So I call this metering lifting. Casey calls it super block metering. Uh, uh, so forgive me for if, if he doesn't like my terminology. But he just, what I, ca I call it lifting because you just, if you can, you lift it all up as high as you can. Yes? You can only do that if you have no branches, right? No branch statements. Yes, if you're you, have to, you have to have guarantees that you will execute all the way through, so there, wouldn't, there couldn't be any control flow, and there are some other subtleties, yes. Right. For example, if you branch back to a loop, uh, you're, you're starting the loop again, so you would have to meter there. Uh, I'm sorry if you come to this later, but um, so the, the cool Ethereum use cast has some kind of cost, and presumably you're paying for that, so is, is, is it the case that um, it, when, you, when you lift the metering that you have to recalculate it, like it's not just the sum of all of the, of, of the costs that would have been passed to each call. Does that make sense? Like, do you want me to try and explain that again? Or? I, I think there is a guarantee. If, you, if you're guaranteed that you're going to execute through, so there's no chance of branching away from it. Uh, well, oh, yeah, no, no. So what I mean is, what I mean is um, so if you're paying for the execution time of the contract, then the call Ethereum use gas is part of the execution time of the contract, right? Yes. So 100 call Ethereum use gas uh, takes more time than one call Ethereum use gas with a higher number. Um, so when you do this lifting, do you recalculate that, that, yes. that price as part of that? Yes, yeah, so these are okay. all ones, and this ended up being 387. Okay. So that we, inj we inject an argument. Uh, the gentleman in the back, Casey, wants to talk. Uh, yeah, just to note that the original metering algorithm there on the left was the uh, the parity the parity wasm utils, and <laughs> so the one on the right was just a patch to that. I've been meaning to open in, in uh, pull request on your repo, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> So it's what happening on the left. It's just that uh, every uh, every call to uh, use gas is looking at the block inside and seeing, oh, that's calling a function, which is 
uh, takes one gas. So like j just your, your entire cost is coming from all these calls to use gas. Yes, so okay. this takes so much time. You're dominated by these yellow parts. Yeah. That's your, your execution time is just, yeah, dominated. So we have maybe 500x in some worst case. Yeah, but, but, but the, the gas cost isn't coming from entering blocks. It's c coming from all those calls to use gas. Yes. There, there's, no, there's no cost to ent entering a block, right? Well, there might be a cost to create a, a uh, uh, whatever, control flow uh, label and these kinds of things, depending on the implementation. Was there a question? Yes. So just to be clear, this metering is happening on the bytecode that is produced by the WASM compiler. Yes. So or, the or in the case of an interpreter, it's happening inside the interpreter. Um, the reason I'm asking is because uh, Sarus's presentation yesterday, he showed us how um, the compiler itself can, in theory, do metering. And I'm just wondering if at that level of analysis that the compiler is performing, where it already can maybe do certain types of optimizations and stuff, like could the metering be done more efficiently in a compiler, in theory, rather than trying to meter bytecode that's already been compiled? Does that make sense? Yes, it's a complicated question. Uh, um, it's a I, I, I would strongly argue that it's actually faster to do it in the WASM uh, than in the compiler itself, um, because if it's, it's just like another thing that the compiler is optimizing, that the compiler um, is built to optimize WebAssembly, right? So if you're just doing it in WebAssembly, it can f f fold things together, you know? Like, if you're just blitting out uh, assembly directly, then maybe you do, I don't know, but, but you, you generate the same assembly each time, but like this can be like context sensitive if you generate it in the, uh, the web, web assembly layer. Um, okay. Although at the same time, it doesn't know that call Ethereum use gas is like a special function. Like it can't do anything. It doesn't know that you can do this. You can fold it together. Is, is Sirius not here? Uh, I was just gonna know. But as far as I understood, it's not the compiler, it's rather the, the engine is where you you inserting those. And I would argue that we cannot do it in the compiler because we don't trust the compilers. Uh, we insert metering at a point where we trust the metering process. That's, that's the right answer. And the, the also comment on Casey is that uh, the WASM utils for the metering on parity, as far as I understand, that is just a tool that you can use to see what metering will look like, but actually parity is doing pretty much the same what Cirrus is doing. You guys are doing the metering um, as part of the, the VM. Clarity, uh, Sergey is shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> From our side, like the what we are doing is basically like just in lining, like what the call of use gas is in the in the main like machine code that we emit. And in that case, uh, because like use gas is kind of like some external function, um, like basically for the compiler will be like hard to do that. So that's kind of like what we are taking advantage of. And um, in the parity side, I have no idea how they are how they are like metering. Uh, yeah, we just uh, basically for now the the process is simple is we just the instrument the bytecode basically modify it, but in the future I think it depends on the uh, like uh, virtual machines that we use uh, because we we don't want to uh, like have a modified uh, v uh, compiler or virtual machine that we use, but if it provides nice interface to uh, replace the f calls to these external functions with our custom, uh, like IR as it uh, possible. For example, I think in Crane Lift, um, it would be uh, like uh, awesome to to do this optimization. I think that's basically like what we are what we are doing. There's a question in the back. <laughs> do you actually have patches for Crane Lift? Do you have patches for Crane Lift? I have patches for Crane Lift? Patches for Crane Lift. We do it on our side, but like we will be very happy to do that. Ah, I didn't create that, but like probably if you have something to accept that, you don't have to do something like that. Sure. <laughs> so it, for the people watching online, there was talk about Crane Lift and patches. <laughs> okay. So that's not the end of the story. Uh, this is just one idea. 
Um, but there are some uh, nuances, there are some subtleties that we have to be aware of. There are costs to this. This is some pattern matching. Pattern matching is not free. Pattern matching can interfere with other pattern matching. Uh, uh, so if we're doing consensus, I mean, uh, on this, if we're charging for each call to use gas, if there is a cost to this call, uh, uh, then uh, we're, we're, doing, we're ma making a consensus change here. Everyone has to agree that we can do this, uh, or we don't have a consensus, or we don't charge for the, the call to use gas. That's another possibility. This one is uh, very interesting. Uh, so a loop. Uh, if I can notice a pattern that I'm starting with a loop uh, 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 that starts at zero and then it increments it by one, and then it, it, it uh, I think there might be a bug here, so it, this might be an EQ. Uh, but and anyway, I know that the, I know uh, statically that this loop is going to iterate five times. I can lift the metering uh, outside the loop, and this is great for crypto, by the way, because uh, uh, a lot of times there's, a, there's an inner loop, and if we can uh, remove the used gas, uh, then we can speed things up. I sped up Ketchak, uh, Ketchak's inner loop, and I have code to just do this automatically. Again, uh, it's, it, maybe people don't like it because it adds complexity. I mean, I have code that you know, does this pattern matching, uh, uh, but uh, you know, what if there's some there are two different pattern matchings that interfere with each other and strange things happen, uh, depending on different orders of doing things? Uh, so this is sort of expanding the, the possibility for bugs. So I don't want to uh, do too much of this. Or I don't, this is a controversial topic, is what I want to say. Uh, other things we've tried is injecting. I don't have an image for this. So we injected this use gas. So we, we call a host function in a host module called use gas. But we also injected, uh, maybe there's a host function call overhead. So we injected this use gas as handwritten WebAssembly. We have a, a few imp implementations that do this. And there are some speed ups from that as well in certain cases. Um, depending, yes? When the gas goes to zero and you have to abort, then, then at that point you do call the host function. It's just that you're do, doing the decrement, and if it doesn't go to zero, the, the, the intent is to avoid the host in that case. Yes, so that's one host call that's nanoseconds. OK. That's fine. Um, oh, what else did we do? Uh, Ketchak. So certain things we can have exact formulas for. So this is the idea that uh, uh, if but we can't do this for arbitrary things, of course. We don't know if an arbitrary thing will even halt, let alone we, whether we can get a, an exact formula for it. Um, but Ketchak is nice. So it's, uh, it takes a, a byte array, or just you know, bytes, whatever, and it just, take, it just works on, I think, 136 byte chunks. So it just iterates over it. And uh, uh, then it does an update, 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 finalize at the very end. So there's, a, there's sort of a structure to this computation. And you can see the input length. Uh, from zero bytes to 6,000 bytes, uh, number of WASM opcodes executed, uh, uh, and we can see that there's a, it's a step function. Um, f and with, with the step at every new, uh, new chunk, at every new 136-byte chunk. Uh, and we have an exact formula for this, so we studied, we took experimental data, we studied it, and, and uh, we wrote a, a Python function, like 30-something lines of code. Uh, but could it be the case that executing this Python function is more expensive than you know, executing the use gases because it's already 36. You know, of course we would implement it. Uh, we can't do it really for arbitrary code, but this is just an idea we have for precompiles. Um, uh, but it turns out some pre some of the precompiles are more complicated than this. This was called uh, blueprint metering uh, that we wanted to do. Uh, so they would it, they wouldn't uh, there wouldn't be consensus on the actual blob. There would just be consensus on the formula, and they can use whatever blob or native implementation they want. Um, there are many open questions. Uh, there's a demand, there's a push for simple gas rules. So con context, when gas rules take into account some context of the execution, uh, uh, people don't like that because there's a lot of testing, a lot of things can happen. So let's just do only simple constant. So there's a formula, there's a, there's a gas cost formula. Let this formula will be a constant. It always returns a constant. Um, uh, and uh, there are limitations to this opcode cost model. Uh, so I'm going to give an example of uh, another model. So this constant model, so let me sort of introduce it. Uh, it doesn't take into account to better, pro so it approximates runtime, but it's not perfect. This is just, a, we sort of, uh, it's an approximation. So uh, we can better approximate runtime run on modern architectures, uh, which have things like pipelines, superscalar, out-of-order execution, cache hierarchies. 
the, the old model, this additive, you know, uh, cost, uh, constant cost or whatever model, uh, doesn't take into account anything. It just, it just gives a cost to each op code. Um, uh, so perhaps if we, if we want to take these things into account, we can somehow uh, lower it to, to some sort of uh, 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 open uh, architecture assembly, ISA language, and count cycles so we can actually execute it. Uh, so then uh, if cache misses and things like this, a lot of things can happen. There's a lot of bad things about this model. Is this better? Maybe not, because then we have consensus on the ISA, then we have consensus on executing on the ISA. Maybe we would have some Verilog, uh, which is how you describe. Uh, when someone wants to get a chip manufactured, they bring them some, some uh, hardware language like uh, uh, VHDL or Verilog or System Verilog, and then they synthesize it into the actual chip. Uh, there's a, it's a multi-step process. Um, but we would actually you know, have perfect, we would have perfect numbers, exact runtime on this risk V. This is a better approximation uh, for x86, for example. Yes, okay. So you have perfect numbers for a given implementation of an ISA. Yes. Even, you know, even for the standardization of an ISA, the manufacturers of the ISA feel f free to change uh, these issues uh, while, still, while still conforming to the ISA itself. Um, uh, so uh, this would really be standardizing on the cost model from one implementation, yes. even when others are, even when everyone is no longer using that particular implementation. Yes, we have consensus on uh, whatever Verilog files. Okay. So the idea would be that even if you're standardizing on the wrong implementation of the ISA, it's still giving you a more accurate cost model with regard to what other machines are doing than a naive instruction counting. Yes, sir. Okay. It's a better approximation. It's not perfect. Do you see any conflict with the diversity goal? Uh, do I see it in, uh, for the people watching online, do I see it in conflict with the diversity goal? Uh, yes, we, uh, there might be because uh, ARM and x86 do whatever they want and they might have some uh, 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 speed ups for different things or some optimizations. Uh, yes and no, uh, because it's better than what we're doing before. We're, we're a better approximation for these kinds of things that modern hardware is using. Uh, there are trade offs, everything has trade offs. Okay, bytecode size. Uh, people have to, it might be a bottleneck for downloading, storage. Uh, small bytecode sizes is, is, is better to have. Uh, Frederick said that uh, there's a 10x, uh, uh, but I think, I think that's gonna be fixed because Alex, uh, check out Alex's stuff because he's getting really small binaries now. Um, but for, for example, this bla uh, as, a, as, a, as a case study, uh, this Blake 2B uh, reference implementation. You can find the reference impl implementation online. And I compiled it to WebAssembly. Uh, number of bytes is on the left, so uh, 7,100 7, bytes. Just, I just compiled it. Uh, then I realized looking through the code, well, looking through other code, that LLVM's uh, WASM backend just does what it's supposed to do. It inlines uh, 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 functions, it unrolls loops. Uh, but that grows the, the binary size. So there's a, there's a sp speed size trade-off. And uh, what's the right trade-off depends, uh, but uh, perhaps an inner loop you would unroll and things like this. But uh, what I found is I went into the reference implementation, uh, uh, made sure that the loops weren't unrolled, used some flags or, or just manually did things, uh, made sure that things were, in, were not inlined with some flag, and I got it down a lot, 2,143 bytes. So that's great news. Um, uh, the, the EVM implement, uh, implementation has like 5,000 bytes, uh, so we're competitive or beating EVM by a lot for everything I've tried. Uh, so that's the good news. Yes, sir. Uh, does that include big numbers? Does that, that include the um, big number? No, this one, this particular one, did not use any big number library. It did, it, did it use the big number um, interface? No, it didn't. Okay. It, it didn't import anything for big num. Okay. So this is great news. I want to sort of make a point. <laughs> and of course, an engineer is going to say, can we do better? <laughs> OK. Uh, compression. So I tried all of these. And then in order of 
of the, of the final binary size. And it turns out, there's a hint, there's some new technology that used dictionary. So the big point is uh, uh, some opcodes are used more than others. If you look at a binary, you'll see i32const way more often than uh, uh, i6 load 16 or whatever, something. So if we, you know that in, there's, there are different ratios uh, 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 of, of opcodes, you can, you can compress. Uh, or there are different w ways to compress, by the way. Uh, these are all different ones. Um, but that's the best. The dictionary ones where, where uh, uh, you say that this opcode happens more often than this one. Um, so wow, we got from 7,100 to 1,100, so great. Oh boy, the, the LEB encoding uh, uh, of integers, there's a small size, there's a big size, but integers are everywhere in the bytecode, so if you, you can have some, uh, depending on the bytecode, uh, 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 size reductions. What I'm pushing for is a canonical minimal form for, WASM, for eWASM bytecode. Uh, uh, so LEB encoding, LEB is minimal, minimal local declaration must use the shorthand notation that we saw earlier. Um, if, and if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, so there's a question of size, uh, do we store the, the uh, 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 bytecode and the instantiated version, things like this? Well, maybe we can, only, we can uh, recover them from each other. So if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between bytecode and instantiated module, we can recover, we can slosh back and forth if that's what we, we have to do. Uh, of course, we should store the bytecode version for consensus reasons or if we want to send it over the network. Uh, um, there's this unreachable thing, and uh, if you read the spec, there's this super awkward thing when you're trying to validate. And anything after unreachable uh, never will be executed. It's just there for no reason. Let's just agree to not allow it, uh, invalidate any code that has anything un after unreachable. Yes? Uh, so I'm confused about this thing of, of recovering bytecode from the instantiated module. The um, WASM... Uh, architecture, there's modules and there's module instances, and the code should only be per module, and only the, the, the per instance state should be per instance. So why would you be, it should be, I mean, the instance knows which module it's an instance of, and all instances that are instances of the same module should be sharing code. Yes. Uh, and then, but they are different with their globals. They are different with their with their uh, uh, memories, perhaps. Right, but but, th but those are the the actual contents of the globals and memories. Those are per instance, and yes. you can't. Rec I mean, th and that's not code size, and that and you and that's that information. You can't lose it. Sure. Well, if you are if you have a, a store and you uh, instantiate a module in the store. Uh, I don't know if it lets you, if the spec, from my understanding, when I read the spec, you're doing something outside of the spec, but uh, there's a store, you instantiate a module, you, you have bytecode uh, that you instantiate, you have an instance in that module, you have indices to the functions, globals, tables, uh, uh, but, everything. But, but all the code is still in the module, not the yes. module instance. Yes, but the, the, the instance is, uh, is encoded to have to specific mo uh, memory inst uh, index and things like this, so I don't think you can, it, you, you would have to sort of hack a specific implementation to do it like you're doing. But it, what, you're, what you're talking about is an implementation, uh, uh, optimization, uh, but not all uh, implementations have to have this, so. Okay. There's another question. Yeah, I, I guess maybe what you're trying to say is like the, the, the code is stored in this like array of funks and like any instance will point into the same place. Uh, all, all the different instances of the same module will point into the same place with funks. But then they will index differently into like memory and yes. tables and so on. That, that, that's a possibility. Uh, yes, implementation specific detail. Yes. But I guess like for smart contracts, you will often like um, w when when you when you deploy it, you're deploying both a module and an instance. Uh, so I guess these will always like in Ethereum, they will often like come together, and you won't have many instances of the same module because that's like saying, well, we have many smart contracts that point to the same code, well, where does, that, where does that code live if not in a contract, right? Yes. It's, it's a, what you're saying is very uh, important for later slides uh, about, you know, we want to link stuff, and then Frederick talked about this as well, as we don't want to duplicate every single function if we just want one version of it. So yes, it's something very important for size as well. Uh, maybe one of the most important things that you're talking about. There are interactions with all these things. I had six points. There are interactions uh, uh, with these things. Um, execution speed, we saw that the bottlenecks are crypto right now. That's the most important thing for us. If we can't do uh, snark and stark verification, we're, 
we're done. It, we're, you know, we might as well just call it, you know, cancel everything. That's the most important thing right now. We have to verify snarks and starks on chain, fast, uh, 100, under 100 milliseconds. Um, compilers, uh, uh, great, except for the part that they're, the 10 point pairings were over 100 milliseconds uh, on all the compilers. That's what we, what we saw from Casey yesterday. So compilers are great, uh, but they might not be good enough for our unique uh, use case. Um, so our idea is big num host functions. Uh, sorry, the text is small. Import big num, uh, mall 256, and, it, and then we t tell what, what function type it is. And then we have a hand optimized uh, big num implementation as a host in the host module, which uses all the, the native things. So what we're doing is we're crossing our fingers and hoping that, uh, I call it the, the Casey conjecture, that all the bottlenecks are in, this, in these mall 256, Montgomery multiplication, the, you know, operations on these, on these big num. And people seem to agree that most of crypto is just uh, pretty much uh, some sort of uh, what we call business logic uh, uh, with some hotspot bottlenecks that are these specific things. So that's our focus right now is to get the Snark and Starks uh, running fast on Wasm. Uh, oh, I didn't explain what this is. There, this is sort of, uh, if we agree on an SSA and we agree on, on an assembly language, then we can tune, uh, or an assembly IS, uh, uh, SSA, the single static assignment, uh, format an algorithm and we agree on everything, then we can sort of tune uh, the specific bytecode uh, to, to map to, from, from the si single status or whatever. The compiler people know better than me. Uh, we can tune it, uh, 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 the bytecode to map to the right registers and, not, and do all the tricks like pre-loading pre uh, from memory, uh, saving registers and things like this. Uh, but that's implementation specific. Then we would have consensus on this whole tool chain. Maybe that's a bad idea. Um, there is a question. Yes. Uh, do we have some time? So I, I have actually um, idea. So you, 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 you have this uh, like note, uh, notebook. With yes, I'm writing. And so like here's the idea <laughs> for it. Um, uh, it's regarding uh, compiler bombs and metering. And... Um, so what is the current approach that we are uh, doing in Parity, for example, is that we are trying to build a compiler that is, uh, which running time is proportional to the, let's say, input size, like of uh, size of the contract. And this is because like we just pay, um, like we need to align with the uh, price of gas that we paid for deploying this contract. But uh, what if we did the other way around? What if we uh, kind of, um, you know, adapted gas pricing for the compiler? Yes, this yes. is something similar, yes. So basically, uh, um, so as far as I know, uh, there are at least two places where uh, the, uh, you know, where uh, the compiler's bo uh, bombs can, can be, uh, uh, you know, planted. Uh, the first one, as, uh, as I know, is SSA. So because of that, I actually uh, remembered. As far I, I spoke with Dan, and he told me that uh, when you convert uh, Wasm to SSA, there can be a worst, uh, like a pretty bad worst case uh, in this um, um, in this point, but actually we can uh, change it a bit uh, and uh, somehow circumvent. But then another point where it can uh, blow up is register allocation. Yes. There might be others. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's defer to compiler experts here. Um, yeah, so what if we just settled on the one like on specific set of uh, optimizations on uh, like uh, specific uh, pipeline, like set of passes, yes. uh, set of optimizations, and just measure it uh, according to some rules that would not allow to like explode. Or if like yeah. if it explodes, then it costs like you know uh, a lot of money yes. to, to explode. Yes. So uh, no, nobody will be able because there's uh, a gas limit for 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 a block. And yes. Uh, yeah, so I hope, uh, actually I hope to discuss this yes. uh, um, idea like after this talk. Yes, I have a feeling we'll be going, we'll be exchanging a lot of messages. Um, 
I have to wrap up. Another idea is uh, related to this one, which is regis register assembly in WebAssembly, a un universal register assembly language. Uh, so it's a three address code, I64 add, get local. So there are 16 registers, for, uh, locals for example, corresponding to registers. We get two, two of the registers, we add them together, we put the results in another register. Um, some other ideas, I, I'm told that I have to start wrapping up, so I'm talking fast. Concurrency, uh, so when, when engineers have Oh, go longer? I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not the organizer, so I can't. Yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm, ra I'm wrapping up. Uh, yeah, so that's it, actually. Concurrency. Uh, uh, do we need 64 kilobyte pages? Where is that? Yeah. Are 64 kilobyte pages too big? I think so. Um, uh, startup costs. We can leave things instantiated. Uh, we don't have to revalidate uh, if we validated the first time, things like that. Um, uh, so the linking things is, all, is wide open still. Uh, do we use uh, imports? Do we use tables? Uh, we want to share code. We don't want to reproduce uh, code. Um, uh, so these are all open and open for prototyping. So that is it.